pretty intense. As the intensity came out, the strong character came out. Also, the focus and um, what's important to Bess's character, which is the train. Right. So, so what does that mean for others? What does that mean for others on the show in regards to her putting train first? Um, well, I think, uh, you know, she's putting the train first, but she's putting the the re re rebellion first so there's two trains at this point uh you know i think we, you have the kind of status quo train where everything was going great for first class and now you have you've had the revolution in episode eight and uh now leighton is taking uh power and i have chosen that side and i think obviously i've uh sacrificed my relationship uh, and my job um, and sort of the the purpose and the uniform that I thought was who was who I was when we begin season one uh, you know she does a whole uh, 180 uh, which is like the best kind of character I think to play is someone who changes so uh, in such a huge way and gets mm -hmm. that arc yeah, exactly. no, it definitely is. And it had fans cheering. Fans were definitely cheering. Oh, good. I don't know if you've seen any of the reaction. I um, I ch tend to stay away from Twitter and um, I got some lovely messages on Instagram from fans who were like, you did the right thing. But um, yeah, I haven't been on Twitter, but um, but if people are happy that Till, <laughs> Till chose, uh, chose the right side, then, then I'm thrilled. Yeah, and then talk about like you know like you said a revolution and the rebellion to actually be in a project too with um debbie diggs mm -hmm. you know, who i mean it's just both of you are such activists both of you are you know so vocal um it seems like you know obviously in your you know when you step away from the screen you know on your on your social media but also too like you said in the show you know rebellion and um you know choosing sides what's it like to work with um with someone like him <sighs> I'm gonna blush. Um, sometimes it's hard for me to work with David because I'm like become like a fan. I, you know, I've worked with him now for three years, and I'm still a fan girl. And I still like I'm like oh my god, I'm working with David Diggs. Um, but David is. I just sent him a text because uh, I don't know if you saw his Fourth of July um, mm -hmm. video, which just like. I just bawled seeing him and um, you know I think he is someone who makes me want to be a better actress, a better creator, a better artist, a better human, uh, someone who I, I like continuously looking for uh, like to because he inspires me and he he like I think he pushes everyone around him to be um, their authentic best selves and um and he's and i can't don't know if i can swear i'm not gonna swear he is <laughs> um, amazingly fun to work with as well and generous and there is no ego uh and he yeah i i i would like to continue to work with david for the rest of my life sometimes we talk about maybe when we're older we can do like a you know uh a, a, <laughs> a detective show like a like a uh, like a procedural, right? You know, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, but uh, anyway, yeah, big fan. You know, I have to say because you know um, I followed you on social media, and I know that um, you've been very vocal in regards to Black Lives Matter. You know, as we all have been, and it's such a trying time for so many people. But that passion has not. It has not gone away. The fire has not been, in, in, you know, extinguished. Um, you know, what keeps you going in regards to, you know, being focused and keeping that focus? And keeping you that know, focus? yeah, I mean, I, this is, you know, this is not a, a hashtag. <laughs> this is not a moment. This is a, uh, a fight until there is justice. And what keeps me going is the black educators and the black activists that I've been following and learning from and listening to and uh, just feel like this is, you know, it's, it's not, uh, 
it's not acceptable to just be like, well, I did a I did a week of protesting uh, and that, you know, I'm done. Like this is a, I, I truly believe that white supremacy is a white problem to fix. And I would like to be part of that. And um, I have to be part of that. I'm white, privileged, and it's my duty to address it within myself and in any aspect of my life where I see it playing out, so. Mm -hmm. And the conversations that you've been having with people, um, different people from different backgrounds, I'm sure, I mean, might be somewhat eye-opening. You know, what do you take away from those conversations or even how to like start them? Well, you have to have the conversation, you know, as uncomfortable uh, and uh, messy as it can be, you have to start with the conversation. I know that I have to listen, um, shut my mouth and listen. Uh, and, um, you know, this is, this is a, this is a real time to, sorry, I'm getting, <laughs> get rid of, um, yeah, no, this is the real time to like educate uh, myself. I'm not going to talk for other people. I'm talking about myself and, and this time in quarantine when we do have this moment of self-reflection and to have some self-awareness and um, yeah, I really, I, I think that there is no um, sweeping anything under the rug. This is like time to confront ourselves. Well, and you know what, having an ally like you and people like you is what's going to make the difference. So, you know, I, I definitely so. happy, you know, for that when I, when I see people, you know, you know, just like us, you know, banding together. You mentioned the quarantine, you know, obviously amongst everything, we're dealing with COVID-19 still. Um, how have you been, I guess, self-isolating? Have you been home with just the family or? Um, yeah, so we were actually filming season two um, and we were in the middle of filming episode nine and 10 uh, for Snowpiercer when they shut it down because of mm. COVID. Um, and we've been shooting in Vancouver and um, my husband and I actually bought a cabin up here in British Columbia um, four years ago, um, sort of randomly and um, and so we decided to come here and isolate with our three-year-old and we haven't left. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. You're so really we're, isolated. <laughs> super isolated, um, very um, privileged and grateful to be in nature and um, away from any cities. But yeah, we're, we're really, um, there's like trees, there's trees and the water. <laughs> um, and that's about it. Have you been able to, um, you know, focus on a project that you might have started and let go or start something? Um, I, you know, I've been put writing a script for the past year that I've been like, you know, keep pushing to the side. And so I started back in there. I'm, you know, I'm also a mom of a, a three-year-old. Um, so I've been really focusing on him um, and his needs and, uh, and actually I'm starting a little, I'm shooting a little short film for my mom, who's a producer starting tomorrow here in my house with my child um, <laughs> that we've been working on uh, uh, and that I'm directing. So um, that's gonna be uh, a fun project. That's gonna be fun. Does he know? Have you, have you prepped him? Like we're gonna do something fun tomorrow. My son? Yes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, I think it's just better if, uh, we just, it's just like, he's just playing and we don't make a big, a big deal about it. Yeah. I'm sort of hoping that that's the way it's going to go. And then, we'll see. And then I'm sure it's going to be fun. It'll be, Thank you. Um, going back to, um, Snowpiercer and I can't help, but I mean, because we're in such kind of chaotic, surreal times right now, presently, mm -hmm. in a way I feel that kind of parallels what you're going through a bit in, in Snowpiercer between the struggles, the class struggles, right? Um, the struggle for equality. Um, you're stuck in one place. You're in a train. Here you are, you know, you're, you're, you're quarantining. Have you kind of like had that line blur a little bit for you? Totally. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, I watched the show. I mean, my husband and I watched the show and we're like, this is so surreal. Um, 
And <laughs> this crazy thing happened when, because this show, we, we started this show three years ago and it's been like mm -hmm. a very long sort of journey um, with a lot of changes in, um, and someone at Comic-Con was like, you excited for the show to finally come out in May? And I was like, I think the world's gonna end before the show ever comes <laughs> out. And then, <laughs> and just like those, though that line like haunts me. Thank you for watching. If you want more extra, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll never miss a video.